Hi, this is Suzanne Seeley with Suzanne Style Snips. I am in Lady Smith, Virginia right now, just a little bit south of Fredericksburg. I'm at the Rusty Beaver. This is a great little place for craft beer, and Austin Ivy is the proprietor here, and he is going to tell us about how he makes his own yeast. He's a really interesting guy. He makes his own cheeses, he makes his own breads, he's a super cook, he makes pickles, he makes beer. I mean, you take it, you take it. Sure, uh, I mean, we can go into like where just even the bread comes from, which is probably the simplest thing. You can collect any yeast off of just about any kind of surface. I mean, there's so many different varieties out there that come from that cerveci family. Um, Saccharomyces cerveci is kind of like the number one wheat used for beer but uh, basically with any bread or uh, beer, you're gonna go and capture something from your atmosphere or fruit or somewhere where it might cling to. And one of the things that we do actually to capture here or for the bread is basically setting out a medium of some kind. Uh, for a beer-based yeast, it's probably gonna be something that's in an auger medium, which is basically a high-strength gelatin that uh, we had work to, which is just sugar water, it's a fancy word for sugar water in the beer brewing community. And essentially after that, we'll make these little plates of gelatin in a petri dish. You know, depending on the size or material that we're trying to capture, it could be like a hoppy wort, it could be something that's a nice mild wort, something simple and sugary. And setting those out in a field or some abandoned, you know, farmlands or an apple orchard. Anywhere around the state, uh, we've gone all the way out to Sperrysville or down to Williamsburg and set up plates and done different capture before. And you basically just pull off uh, these colonies of fungal matter, you know, these Saccharomyces cerevisiae uh, cell organizations, and we isolate them into its own little separate bit of work, usually the same style of work that was used to capture them in the first place. To get them adjusted, if we want to try and find something that might be more compatible with an IPA, we might use a low hopped work uh, auger for that kind of material. And then we just breed it out and slowly try and introduce it to our beers and see what it works with best, whether it's something that can go with a darker beer. So many of them are wild and sour and produce a high amount of lactic acid. You have to kind of wrangle them in and get them adjusted to maybe not producing as much of that through hereditary differences generation to generation, or simply just continuing to isolate them down to find qualities that you like. There's even, I mean, so many modern ways that we can adjust them. Uh, I'd love to see some brewers start using CRISPR, which is this new form of uh, bacterial editing. It's basically an immune response that bacteria would have in the past where you kind of like a pair of scissors cut out the DNA that was harming them or had the potential to cause some kind of ill effect. And now we're finding out we can manip uh, manipulate human DNA with it, we can manipulate you know, fungal DNA, anything that we might want to actually get out of um, something you know, as a different change. Uh, the easiest one is you can go back to high school and usually see kids isolating out like a jellyfish section of jellyfish DNA that would cause them to be uh, bioluminescent and then adding that into some form of yeast. So maybe we'll see something along the lines of that in the future where we're adding qualities like an ale yeast that has more hefeweizen characteristics or something of that nature. But um, in general, we're just looking at what the qualities we want. It's usually something wild because it's what's popular right now. But the big thing is we're looking for strains that just have unique character because those unique characters make a beer more interesting, intriguing, and unique to each individual place. And the more that people play around and expose themselves to just trying to find something in their local environment, even if it is an urban dwelling, or hopefully more rural stuff, because I feel like more interesting flavors come out from farther and farther isolated, you know, away from human kind of habitation. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, it, it's such a random world out there, and if you're not trying to actively capture something, you're kind of losing out on the potential for an interesting flavor unique characteristic. Thank you very much, Austin. That was so interesting. Yeah. I really Cheers. appreciate that. So that's it for me. Please like, yeah. subscribe, uh, yeah. and follow. Thanks.